Video calls are great, but it can be also a bit unpredictable with the connection, so my apologies about that, but I love the discussion and content. Now before we get started, I'd love to take about 20 seconds to show you something fantastic happening on Schoolism.com, if that's okay. The Schoolism Summer Sale is on now. From now until July 11th, save over 30% on a one-year subscription and get immediate access to over 50 art courses and weekly live webinars hosted by top industry artists. But this offer won't last long, so subscribe today and we'll see you on Schoolism.com. I'll start off with Daniela Strigileva, production designer at Pixar. I think I heard of that studio. A little backstory is we went to school together. Yeah. Uh, Daniela was my classmate back in the day. Um, then we have Lin Chen from Moon Active, uh, another amazing illustrator, artist, uh, extraordinaire. And then we have Claire Keane, children's book illustrator, illustrator in general. Yeah, I'm currently working with my dad in a dream work. Beautiful, beautiful. And we have the Oscar winning, amazing, incredible Brenda Chapman, director of uh, Brave. Next, we have Pernille Oram, all the way from Kenya, joining us today. And she's currently working at Kickstart. And then Last but not least of our guests is Eliza Ivanova, illustrator extraordinaire, but also previously was at Pixar in a, in a past life. And then we have my co-host, multi-Emmy winning Maureen Fan. I'm going to start off the entire panel by asking a very, very broad, easy question, which is how did having kids impact your career? Anyone can start. That's not an easy question, Marie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest question we're starting. Um, I guess I, I, if you, you guys don't mind, I could go first. Um, I feel like, to me, honestly, like having kids was not what I prepared for a long time. Like, like we were, we were talking, um, talking about earlier, we were talking about having the kids, but when it actually happened, I don't think it was <clears throat> actually prepared. And that year I was gonna start a new job. I was gonna travel for workshops, um, doing a workshop and everything. But when I found out I was pregnant, my reaction was like, oh, okay, now what? So like, to me like everything kind of had to stop for a little bit um so after i gave birth i i was working at Warner brother at, at that time but because the pandemic we had no child care here so i had to quit my job in order to you know take care of my newborn baby full time so it was hard it was hard for me um but i was able to slowly um start freelancing um, start part-timing and now right now I'm back to full-time so for me it's like a pause so it's like a total shift on my uh, on my focus but right now I was able to get back into it with the new perspective and everything so I think in that way it changed quite a bit um, um, in many different ways and yeah yeah, I also want to say that for me, before, like, I'm still pretty new to the whole thing. He's only a little over a year. But for me, the biggest change was that uh, before, everything in this industry was something I was very, very passionate about. It was what drove me. It was what I wanted to do. And I was like, I was very, very driven. And then all of a sudden, it, he came into the world and then it became secondary. And it took me a long time to accept that. And, and accept that it's okay that right now that I'm all about having a good time with him and enjoying him. And then I do the work that I need to do to, to, to have a job and, and, and stay in the industry, but it's not as important. And that was very hard for me to come to terms with because I was also like, oh, okay, well, I have him three months later, I can get back to work. And I was very fortunate. I, it sounds harsh, but it, I was very fortunate that the pandemic made me cancel everything before he was born so I wasn't having to cancel it and having all those hard uh, um, thoughts about it yeah I'm gonna jump in with uh, something similar to um, what Pernil's saying which is that 
before I had kids, I have two and, and the oldest is eight now. Before I had kids, I used to kind of indiscriminately take everything on. Like everything was a challenge. I'm always going to get better. Every, even the smallest projects, which sometimes I would regret taking, you know, I would take them on because I'm like, oh, this is a learning experience and, um, uh, and, and it will help me in my career. But, and this maybe speaks a little bit more to like the way that I work after kids uh, rather than my entire career. But I feel like now with them, I'm more considerate. And that's like, I'm more thoughtful about the projects that I really want to take on. And there are times that I want to be like completely dedicated to a project. And I, I have far fewer regrets about taking things that maybe didn't matter that much. And I, in the past, I had all this pressure that I put on my, my oh, I'm going to regret it if I don't take it. But because I have to be more selective with my time and spend time with my kids and then and then do projects that matter, I'm a lot more selective. And I feel like that actually has been in like after eight years, you know, of <laughs> learning this, because at the beginning, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to how to juggle it all um, that that kind of became easier now with more experience. It's becoming easier. And I feel like it's making me a more satisfied artist too, <laughs> to be kind of like. Oh, this one really matters. This is where I'm going to put my energy because I have to save the other part of my energy for my family, you know? So that's been actually, it was really hard, like Pernil saying at the very beginning, because I didn't know how to do it. And now it's getting easier and it's more satisfying in a weird way. You know, I feel like I'm more kind of empowered to choose and to say, this is important to me. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was uh, best laid plans. Uh, best laid plans is like Kevin and I were both sort of doing really well in our careers when we, you know, we, he was directing Tarzan, I was directing Prince of Egypt, and we were, we decided, okay, let's, let's do it, and we'll take a few months off, and then we'll just sort of tag team as one, you know, project comes up and whatever, and then we had my daughter, and two weeks later, he was offered a a live action film um, and that changed everything because because he was going on going to be going on location and we upped and moved to London and it just everything just went upside down and I um, realized I could either follow him around on location with our daughter or I can uh, you know try to get back into my career once my daughter was old enough so it was it was a it was sort of tossing things up in the air but in the end, you know, I, I um, ended up taking some time off after Prince of Egypt and then, and then heading up to Pixar and then just how she affected, she affected my storytelling, my, my, you know, everything about my work. She was sort of uh, everything about her was, was sort of channeled into what I was doing because my Kevin, um, was gone so much of the time. It felt, I was almost single momming it a lot of the time. And so, you know, I, I think what it did though, is as far as how I looked at work, I used to work, I I'd do all nighters, you know, I'd go in and, and, you know, just work until three in the morning and go home and whatever. But once she came into it, I, I came home for dinner. I came home to make sure that she had her mom and I made sure that, to be there for her. And, um, it was, uh, it was a, a struggle, you know, as far as balancing both, but I managed to do it. And I think my crew at times appreciated it because I, I, I tried to work it so that no one had to put in such late hours, you know, that, that we would get the work done during the day. And I wasn't just saying, sorry, I have a kid. I'm leaving. You all have to keep working. That wasn't my, I, it's like we all have families we all have commitments and it made me much more aware having my own child um, made me much more aware of the family life that all all the other people on the movie um, were dealing with so in a sense it, it it softened me a bit and as far as being so driven but I was still driven but just uh, driven for my daughter as much or if not more definitely more than I was for the career, but I still love the career, so. Yeah, for me, I, I've noticed that working with kids has evolved tremendously for me. Like 
with my kids when when I first had Matisse, my first daughter, I was like really um, just trying to keep it all going at the same time. And then but then I realized really quickly that I had to decide very much like what you just said, Daniela, that like I had to prioritize certain certain projects were more important because I realized the time that I was taking away from the most important thing in my life. And I thought that as my kids would get older, that that would, um, I don't know, that that the newness of being a parent would kind of wear off and I'd be like, oh, you know, I'll get back into it. And honestly, it hasn't. Like I've actually started becoming more and more aware of just the finite time I have with them and uh, just the desire to be like living. And I'm a pretty ambitious person and I love working, but I'm in this place right now where I'm just, my daughter just turned 13 years old and I'm just like, this, this is crazy. Like I only have five more years with her and, and it feels like she was just born. And so I'm like, ah, oh, I like the work stuff is important to me, but not as important as the time that I'm spending with my kids. And so I'm still trying to do the animation thing and the children's book stuff, but trying to do it in in a more and more conscious way um just so that I can just enjoy my time with the kids rather than feeling like oh god like oh I have to stop working to go pick them up a little um because there's also that feeling especially in the beginning just like oh I just want to work I just want to work and then now I'm starting to realize no they're growing up so fast like I don't want to miss all this. I have a question um, from the audience about um, what they've observed is they feel like you're, uh, Laura Thompson says, you were all established, it seems, in your careers before having children. Do you have any advice for moms still trying to launch their art careers? Maybe I can jump in. <laughs> this is what happened. I've given my two cents about this yet. <laughs> I wanted to definitely talk about that a little bit. Um, because, um, I had my first kid when I was still at Pixar and was relatively young. So I thought, you know, I have all the time in the world and I can like definitely do both things uh, at a you know great level, but it definitely took a toll on me after a while. Like after, I want to say like the first three years, it's exhausting, you know, to try to do it all and be 100% momming it and working it. <clears throat> I think uh, what really helped me was have something that I'm super passionate about. That's like a small thing on the side. And that was uh, literally just like social media stuff, just posting and making sure I'm, I'm present with that and really helped me ground myself and I like built something for a long time. I want to say like seven years or so to the point where I felt comfortable enough to, when I had my second kid to really like, you know, make the, the decision to um, go freelance um, and just be very smart with, with the time that I have. As everybody pointed out, you don't, you don't have time. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you thought you had free time, then once you have a kid, you really don't have any free time. So you kind of have to make free time here and there. Um, so I would say for anybody who's struggling with that, just baby step it. Just small step and don't try to rush anything until it feels appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Just there is something I really miss those those years where I didn't have kids and I had so much time to just like dedicate to anything that I wanted to do, spend hours at Target and <laughs> just like, just like work. Like I, I'd stay at work until 11 at night. And I'm so glad that I had those years. Like I, uh, um, and I, I do think that like, that really benefited me to be able to kind of um, establish my career before I start 
starting to have kids, but I know that's not, that's not the, the path that everybody has. And everybody's thing is different. And also I think that what the coronavirus has taught us all is that we are all capable of so much more than we ever thought would be possible. Like taking it on, like the zoom classes and working and just, that was like ridiculous. And, and now I'm like, wow, wow, that, that was possible. So I don't know. Uh, I'm that. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, well, I was just going to say, I don't think I answered anything in that. <laughs> <laughs> I, said I did, <laughs> did want to ask you about that topic though, specifically about COVID. I mean, I, I feel like COVID has probably rejiggered everybody's lives in terms of prioritization. And I think it's been difficult, but at the same time, I feel like I am much more focused on family than I was previously. I know for my first daughter, I was just flying around all the time. Um, like she stopped drinking breast milk because I was gone for two weeks and I felt so guilty afterwards because she refused the boob. I'm like, no, it's all my fault because I was gone. But the second kids during COVID, so I um am able to be with her like 24 <laughs> seven. Great. But at the same time, there's lots of moms who like, because they don't have childcare, um, it, it's so hard. So I'm just curious for you guys, how COVID has impacted your being a mom and balancing that also with work. I'm just going to jump in here again and say that like, for me, COVID, that whole thing, I, 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 I'm a single mom. So I've got my two kids at the house and I've got like, I, I have them almost 100% of the time. And I had just started at DreamWorks and I was, I also had like two books that I had just signed. So I like when I found out that my two kids were going to be at the house with me uh, while I was working and that they were going to have to do that. I was like, this is not possible, but something happened because I always have in the back of my mind that I have to be doing more. Like I have to be coming up with a new idea. Well, like COVID kind of like put everything in a parentheses where it's just like survival mode. It's fine. The kids, the kids can watch, uh, they can be on their screen time and you don't have to feel guilty about it. And so I was like, okay, I'm taking that off the table. I'm not going to feel guilty about this. And then I was like, I'm not going to feel guilty about not having um, my next book all lined up. Like, I'm not going to feel guilty about not having a new idea. And so all I could focus on was my DreamWorks work and my kids. And there was something so liberating about that, about like having this parentheses where I'm like, you know, I, I can't, I can only do this. And now that as the world is starting to open up again, I'm noticing that I'm starting to feel guilty about like not doing more but it was really nice to have like that little parentheses that um, I could just tell myself, you don't have to worry about this anymore. Like, don't feel guilty. And so I'm trying to like, see how can I integrate that like freedom of that like very restricted time in my life today. Yeah, I this resonates with me a lot because, you know, Every, I have so many thoughts about this, like going back to when I first had my kids, I was such a perfectionist in my past life and I was so ambitious and I wanted all the projects and I went into having kids thinking that I'm going to have my full-time career, like full-time as if I have like 24 hours for that. And then I'm going to have 24 hours, like imaginary hours to be a mom, you know, and somehow be so good at it all. And then when COVID hit and everything went crazy, and so my husband works at Pixar too, and he was really busy and I was in the middle of production designing. And plus I had just had a baby like a year before COVID. So she was one, we didn't, we don't have family around. And I was getting like, starting to get not well. Cause I was just pushing myself so hard, like to Brenda's point, like not sleeping and trying to do it all at the same time. COVID, like what Claire's saying, is just kind of liberated me from, okay, I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to do what I have to do to be kind of just functioning and, and feeling good so that my kids can rely on me. And it, it really um, freed me up from, again, like, it was like, what is not important here? You know, like, I'm just going to focus on the like three things that matter, which is my work, finishing this job, finishing this movie, which I love. 
um, being there for my kids. And, you know, we're very lucky because we could work from home and because we didn't have to be out there every day. And so I, I, that's not lost on me that we had that also like, you know, being able to be at home. And even though it was so difficult to homeschool them, you know, I, it taught me also to, to ask for what I need, you know, because our society really isn't made for women to, um, um, like I used to compare myself to people who didn't have kids, to men who didn't have kids, to women who didn't have kids. And I was like, I need to perform at that level. And this taught me, I'm not going to get sick. I'm not going to stay up until five in the morning. I'm not going to like, I need to ask for what I need. So I need to rewrite this book. Like what is a woman production designer with two kids who just had a baby on while production designing for the first time? I have no idea. And I was so scared to like, I was just looking at all these like perfect performances in my head of other people. And I think COVID really helped like kind of shape me up and go like, you know what? Like (laughs) it will be what it will be. (laughs) It will get done slower or imperfectly. I'm going to delegate. I'm going to ask for help. You know, it will be messy and I'm just going to own it and tell my team it's going to be messy. And I think that was really like humbling, really humbling. And I'm honestly, I'm going to take some of that stuff with me going forward. You know, it's not just a parenthesis for me. I'm going to take it forward. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm have to say, you guys that uh, I, I'm so impressed with the fact that you all have are working through COVID with children. And I was all through COVID thinking, thank God she's grown up. I did. She's, <laughs> she's not at home. Cause I, you know, I, I just thought, I don't know if I could have managed it. I mean, in, in a way, but obviously it's manageable, but it's tough. But now you guys are going to have this incredible muscle, you know, it's this thing that you have now having gotten through it. And, and you have that, that thing that I, I, I don't have, <laughs> but, but it's, it's incredible that you've, you've done it. You should all pat yourselves on the back. Cause that through the whole thing, I just kept thinking, oh my God, I'm so glad that she's away and living her own life now and, you know, doing her good, you know, her thing <laughs> because you guys are amazing. So I, I just wanted to say that pat your, pat yourselves on the back. You guys deserve <laughs> medals for for what you've done <laughs> yeah but that idea of not being a perfectionist like it, I've taken it into my parenting as well or it just like happened in my parenting as well where I just like the only thing that matters is is peace like I just want peace in this house like <laughs> my screaming and and they they just want to be entertained and like I I can't entertain them so these are my options and, and these are not things that I would have allowed before, but, um, at the end of the day, I, I want to have a good relationship with my kids rather than just one that's following rules just because that's what I've told myself is, is correct. Right. I have different, different, oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly mention like for, I don't, I don't know if you had this experience, but I have a, a three-year-old and the daycare has been a petri dish of viruses it wasn't just COVID it's like one thing after another and since October it's like every two weeks I have to take breaks and make sure they're okay and I I just I don't know how anybody in the studio (laughs) is able to manage this you know I work freelance so I I get to set my deadlines now and they're very loose for that reason, because I just have to be flexible for the kids. Um, And I just remember, you know, being, always feeling so guilty when I had to take time off for the kids being sick. And it was, yeah, I guess COVID, I don't know know if it's like COVID, but it made it less like the guilt trippy um, feel of like, oh my gosh, the kids are sick again. I have to Say that again as an excuse, and but like, what else can we do? Um, it's been a, <laughs> kind, of a kind of a recurring thing in our house. There's like little colds here and there, which are that's tough. Like it's just little colds, but like you see them suffering, you know, they can't sleep that night. It's like, oh my god, how can I help you? <laughs> it, it, is, it is hard, like even. Like Ethan right now, it's 18 months old. 
he hasn't gone to daycare yet, but I have so many friends warn me, you know, it's gonna happen when he goes to daycare, you know, it's all kinds of germs there. So I think, yeah, we're all have to be mentally prepared for that. Um, but yeah, also I wanna mention um, during COVID, like working from home and all that, I think it's really important for us to tell ourselves don't feel guilty because I trust everyone is trying to do our best to provide whatever we can provide. I mean, there are moments we'll feel like, oh, may, oh I, I think I can do this better. I think I can spend more time with him, but we're all trying what we can do the best. So we'll be nice to ourselves, you know? Uh, yeah, don't be too, too hard on, on ourselves. I'm telling, I'm, I'm saying that to myself as well, um, just because. Um, uh, I think I, I want to mention something because I know there's a, there are a lot of um, mom-to-be in the, in the audience. I, I think, I mean, like, I think a lot of us are working from home, um, no matter you're freelancing or because COVID, COVID, we're working from home. It's important to, I mean, we have the time we could spend with the kids, um, but I think it's important to have a supporting system. Um, during COVID, there was like we couldn't get any um, childcare support because my family is in China and my husband family is in another state. They couldn't fly over. So for us, we have to do it, everything by ourselves. It was so hard. Um, but I think for, uh, for new parents right now, like definitely think, plan ahead of what kind of um, support you will have. Either it's your family or maybe hire a nanny, depends on your situation. It is so important because... I feel like I was trying to do everything. After three months um, um, giving birth to Ethan, I was back in, at work. I was um, part-time at that time, but I was telling myself, myself I can do everything, you know? I can, because um, he's sleeping on the side, I could just, I, I set up my workstation station right next to him so I can do a little doodling there. but. It didn't work out. I think as an artist, especially when you're creating an image, you have you need to have a little bit more delicate time to to think about what you wanna 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 paint and draw, and it needs focus. It's not like I mean a meeting or replying emails. It can just do five minutes here, ten minutes there. I don't think it works that way. So for me, what um, solved the problem in the end is like we have we hired a nanny. And right now she takes care of Ethan in the morning and I was able to focus on work. And then after three in the afternoon, I'm taking over. So I was able to focus and be all there when I'm with Ethan. Um, so I don't feel guilty about anything because I'm hundred percent there. Um, but at night after he goes to sleep, I go back to my studio and do whatever I need to do. So it's like, split time instead of like focusing, trying to get everything down. So that, that, that worked for me. So I think my suggestion for um, new moms or <laughs> new parents to be um, definitely plan out your um, supporting system. Uh, yeah, that's just what I want to say. I just want to jump in uh, to Lynn's thing uh, about, I totally agree with everything. I just want to say I have not yet been able to work after I put the baby down. That was my big plan when I, uh, <laughs> when I got him. I was like, I always work at night. It's going to be perfect. He sleeps at seven. I can work late. And as soon as he's down, I just, I just need to do something completely different. I can't even enter my office. So, so I have just, I don't even have feel guilty about it. That used to be my, like, I doodle for Instagram time. I'm just like, that ship is just going in its own way. I don't even care. I need, I need, I can't work at night right now. I go to bed at like nine right now. So, <laughs> so be prepared for that too. That surprised me a lot. I thought I was going to be able to, even if I have a good night's sleep, I still can't work at night. You know, I feel the same way, but the other thing I've discovered is the things that used to take me like eight hours to do now take me, I don't know, four. <laughs> you know? So like, it's surprising how much more efficient you become once you have to focus. And Lynn, I mean, I, I, I had to learn, when I first started art directing, how to like, oh, I have 20 minutes between meetings. I'm going to like continue doing this drawing that I left halfway through. And, and I didn't think I could do that. I, I thought I needed like three hours to do like just the thing. Um, but 
with kids, it's even more so, you know, I do, I do think you need focus time. And so it's important. I agree. It's important to find those like chunks of time with support and help where you can be completely focused on your work, but I also feel like, um, and even COVID, you know, like you realize that, oh, we don't need to be in the office like eight or nine hours a day. You know, we can get so much done at home and taking these breaks and, and taking care of our bodies and taking care of our families and our kids actually kind of fuels you too. And, and you can, and that balance, like you, you can focus on your work and just get it done really quickly too, sometimes. Uh, and delegating, you know, trusting other people. Like if, if you're in a situation with a team, of course it's different for, for uh, freelancers. And Yala, I actually have a question about, I, um, I was at dinner with Domi, she recently, and she was talking about how for Turning Red, because it was uh, all, seemed like all female leads um, from the producer to production designer to Domi, that they had way, at, at the end, like way better schedules, mm -hmm. Everything happened more on time and morale was higher and it was high, like everything was awesome. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be like, oh, you like slave away, work in the middle of the night and all that stuff. I was just wondering if I was super interested in that. And I was just wondering if you could share. I know it wasn't your <laughs> but if there's anything you could share about that, because I found that well, inspiring. I'm, I'm, I'll share that I'm envious of that because I wasn't on that movie. <laughs> you know? uh, no, I, I totally trust it. You know, even their um, uh, soup tech, their, their uh, visual um, effects supervisor, she had two twins on that film. I was just thinking, it, it, and, and it was like, yeah, an all-star kind of female team. But, you know, I, I worked on Luca and I felt like it was similar. It wasn't as many women at the top, but our producer, um, who had younger kids as well. She really created that environment. And I think, again, like they created it because it was just a majority. That's what happens. You know, it's like, it's all women and, and they, it's like, we can rewrite the book, you know, we can make it what we need it to be. And then it's like, suddenly you realize it's not just about women or, or moms, you know, it, you can, everyone needs time to go work out, to take care of their bodies. Like if we kind of say, this is the time that after four, we don't need to do meetings. Take time to go pick up your kids if you need to go to the gym, gym do whatever you need to do um, for yourself or your family. I think that's that's how it becomes kind of like, oh, things are getting done more effectively because we all have that space, you know. So I felt yeah. that a little bit on Luca, but I think that they really had it good that, uh, that way because they created it that way. They needed it. And, you know, you, you develop that trust and you say what you need. You say, like, I'm sorry, I have a baby. I have to go home at this time or I have to pick up my kid at five from daycare. And it's it becomes kind of institutionalized. I think that's important. You're very, very, very lucky to have that <laughs> because in my day, I didn't have that. You know, I tried very hard to, to put that in, but it just wasn't accepted, wasn't part of the culture at the time. So, so um, you guys are very, very um, fortunate. You've moved forward. I think a lot of things have, you know, gotten better. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I just listening to all of you guys, I just, uh, I feel like, you know, I've been through it. I'm no longer in the trenches like you guys are in that sense, but the, the one thing when I look back, I wish I could uh, uh, go back in time is just uh, talk about don't feel guilty. It's, it's also just forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Just at the end of every day, you know, you did your best, everything. You love your child. You love your job. You're doing the best you can. And so, yeah, you're going to mess up. You're going to have hiccups. You're, just forgive yourself at the end of every day. And then that time with your child, you know, that, that time that you want to give to your family, just give it to your family. Close that laptop, put down the phone and just give them your undivided attention for an hour, half an hour, three hours, you know, whatever it takes, you know, in that moment. But those are the things I would, if I could go back, I wish that I'd just really, you know, given myself a break. And so if I can give you anything from what I went through, it was just it's okay, you know, everybody. Um, Brenda, I, I would love to hear I don't, I don't know, you're I would love to hear more about what it is to be a mom 
once your kids have left the house and that transition from like the craziness of having to work and be a mom and just all of the things that we're all experiencing now, like, how is it like once you've like <laughs> exited that and then you're like out in the, like for me, that's like freedom. But at the same time, there's something very like, I'm scared of that too, because I, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I would love to hear how, what does that side of a working mom feel like? No, I think. Um, well, the worry doesn't quite go away because they're going off to college, going through their own, they're, you know, trying to figure out how to be that adult and go. So you still have that, but it's not as intense. It's not such a daily, um, uh, you know, you, you're not running around like a chicken with your head cut off, you know, trying to figure out uh, how to make things work. You're just, you do have the, the focus and the back of your mind focus of, are they okay? Are they going to need anything? Are they going to, you know, is it, will they have to move home? Will they, you know, all of that. But, but at this time, I think I just needed just, I took a bit of a sabbatical because when my daughter came along, it seemed like my daughter and my career were so intertangled emotionally, you know, it's, it's like you want, you want to do your work. You want to be a great mom, you, you know, and it just gets all, everything is just so connected that when that aspect of it sort of gets free, I didn't know what to do with the other part. Um, yeah. almost so, so just on a, on a subconscious level, I just, I had to take a break a little bit and then, and then it was nice. Then once I had that moment, you know, a few months, then I, then I realized I could focus back on my, my art again and, and concentrate in it and know that, okay, yeah, she needs this help. I can do that, you know, in a different time. It's just not as intense. So, um, but I, yeah, find, I needed that break. <laughs> has it opened up like a, a, a creative um, lane for you having what I imagine to be just so much time, but you still have that like <laughs> connection with your daughter. Um, like, is there, is it, is there something that happens at that time? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if there's any magical thing that happens, but what, what I find is that I like to go to her and ask her, uh, I ask her to put her eyes on what I'm doing and she'll give me feedback knowing me in a different way than anyone else does. Um, I was actually, it was kind of, um, interesting. We were both, she was applying to colleges. Um, she'd taken quite a bit of time off and she was writing her essays for the colleges and the universities. And I was applying for an artist residency, um, to get away. And I had to write essays and, and all of this to, to get into it. I wanted, that's part of what I was trying to do is take some time just to write. And so we were switching, our essays and proofreading and reading and trying to get to the intent. And it was kind of amazing that she had grown to be this person that I respected and trusted her opinion. And I didn't realize that I had gotten there, but, but she had really good feedback for me. And, and, and she, because I was asking for her feedback for the first time, she was more open to my feedback, you know, as far as, as if I had, had thoughts or criticisms, it was, it was this lovely moment of, of just being two, two people, you know, that related to each other that had a lot of love there, but, but it, it was just the step up into a different, relationship, a different way to move forward, um, not only as my child, but also as a, as an adult that I respected um, what she had to, to say. So yeah, that you get those moments and then, and then you see a different kind of brighter future that is less um, angst ridden <laughs> um, yeah. that, that, that can, so I don't know if that oh, answered. 
you clearly did something correct where your kids like listen to you at this. <laughs> I'm just hoping that my kids won't oh, hate me. Trust me. <laughs> I went through the teenage years were just, oh my God, you know, what, I, what did I do? <laughs> you know, I just, I really didn't think we'd come out the other side talking to each other. You know, it was that <laughs> rough, but, but now we're very close, but so there is hope. Trust me. <laughs> I have a question from the audience um, that it points to something that Brenda had talked about earlier, which is how having kids can actually impact the the content of the work that you're creating and I just want to ask you all like how has having kids impacted your storytelling your art the actual contents of what you you make such a good question I don't know if I have an answer but I know that right now especially after having a daughter you know my um I'm like Elisa we I have a I think our kids are the same age. My youngest is three years old and have a boy and a girl. Um, but for both of them, you know, I, I am so interested in female storytelling. I'm so interested, so much more interested in female, uh, in reading female authors, mothers. Like I read about motherhood a lot right now. It's, it's some phase that I'm going through, but it's because I don't see a lot of, um, especially in animation, there are not a lot of films about, Moms, I mean, Brenda, you know, you, when you were at Pixar, Brave was like, we were looking at, <laughs> at your film. And, and I remember feeling like, finally, <laughs> finally, somebody's going to talk about this. And maybe I'm just at that stage in my life. But I don't know, like, I'm, I'm speaking on a personal level. You know, I work for Pixar films right now. And, and I definitely, definitely use my voice to influence the, the female characters as much as I can and the mother characters as much as I can, but I do feel like there's a huge gap there. Like, you know, a lot of stories are still told from a male point of view and mothers are in a very limited category. So I feel like maybe it's like my dream and wishful thinking. It's more like, I want to talk about this in some form or another, whether I do a book or, or I do a short film or something, you know, but it's like on my mind. And, and I feel like that comes with even what Brenda's talking about, about her daughter now, like this wonderful relationship with this human being who used to be kind of like attached to you, but now is a full, and, and you really, you, I, I thought you have kids and you made them and they're your like little copies. And it's like, so not that they're their own people from day one. And you have to like kind of navigate this, this crazy, wonderful relationship with this completely external person. So I don't know if I've done anything yet in my career to, um, there are no results yet, I don't think, other than what I can bring to Pixar from my voice, but I am so interested in it. And I really, part of why I'm here is because I wanted to talk to you all, you know, and to kind of be part of this community and, and, uh, and the community in the chat, you know, all these women who have this on their mind. So I think it's, um, we have a voice and we have there's something about mothers, you know, and women who are complex that we can we can influence in our with our art. Can I just say something from a total outsider point of view, obviously? <laughs> yeah. um, from an outsider point of view, like Brenda was talking about not being in the trenches anymore. I just want to acknowledge the fact that from the outsider point of view, it was like you were the one to help dig those trenches you know there were no trenches before that and uh just wanted to acknowledge that it's true there i mean <laughs> when i started in anime there were very few women that were before me who had kids and you were kind of you are kind of like the the one uh person that really <laughs> French. <laughs> It was it was hard for me in that there were no examples for me, so I didn't know what I was what the pitfalls were. Really, I just sort of dove in, and you know, all I could do was just play it by ear, and you just just follow your instincts, follow your gut, and you know, and. If you, if you have, it's, there are more of you now, so you can lean on each other and this not necessarily worldwide as this is going on, but, you know, reach out to, 
to your peers and, and, and give each other ideas. Uh, that's, that's one thing I didn't really have your, but boy, you guys are lucky you do have that. So. And we're lucky we have, and thank you for all the pumping rooms. <laughs> like required yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, you are. It's the best. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> You know, I, oh. I just felt, I just felt we graduated when we got tampons in the bathrooms you know, <laughs> that, that weren't, you didn't have to pay a quarter for it. <laughs> That was just amazing. <laughs> Claire, you were saying. Well, I was just going to, uh, going back to that question about, um, how children has impacted my storytelling. I just feel like they are, they are what is responsible for any ideas that I have. It's like, it truly, it comes from them. My son is like, he's just got this kind of crazy, like incessant creative brain. And so I just look at him and it's just like this wealth of information. I'm like, oh, I want that brain. But like it, it my kids are constantly inspiring me. And my latest book was really just kind of out of this awe that I have for my, my son in particular, my daughter is also very creative, but Roman just like, it's, it's always there and it's just limitless. And I know that like, we all have that potential and that capacity for that. And, and to see him still living in it before having all the constraints of adulthood or just the things that you kind of go through as you get older, that kind of like, kind of reel you in that that's what inspired my latest book that I wrote. And, um, and I've just realized that all of my stories have been inspired by my kids. And so even though it's like really, it, it it's, feels like a war zone trying to make it all work. It does. There are like these beautiful, bright moments of like, wow, actually all of these stories are inspired by them. How about, um, I have another question from Celine Lala, which is how long after having your baby, did you feel good about going back to work? And I would love to hear from Eliza. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Uh, Cause I did, I didn't feel like going back to work when I had my second kid. I was just, it was, it was very hard. <laughs> it was a hard period of time um, for me emotionally. I was just like not prepared to have a nanny, you know, kind of like a stranger take care of my brand new born baby while I'm literally like kind of, pay, you know, getting a paycheck to give to the nanny. <laughs> And that's this kind of this process took a while. I want to say I'm just getting out of it, <laughs> and it's like three years later. Um, but again, to to both um, Claire and Pernil's point, I just I don't feel the guilt anymore, and I don't really care. <laughs> I'm just like, the kids are the kids are priority, of course, but also they they're gonna grow up eventually. So I'm just I know this is like not my state of being permanently, even if it is though, like, I, again, I'm totally fine with that as well. Um, but I think now is finally the time where I feel like, okay, this feels like back to normal speed from what I remember <laughs> could be different. Um, but I'm super comfortable with the new, like adjusting to the new life and being okay with that and not yearning for something that's kind of long gone. I'm just like, okay, this is the new normal. And it's, great like it's just it's different but that's the beauty of it um, yeah i also want to tune in as i mentioned before i thought i was gonna wait like three months and then get back to work uh but i ended up taking a whole year off uh basically uh from at least paying jobs not like my own doodles which i did very very seldomly um i had been working really hard for like might not say, but like 12 years freelancing and doing so much work and really like delivering both personally and, and work-wise for so long. So when I finally took the break, I was like, I think I need this not only to be with the kid, but also just 
to be me and and enjoy not stressing over work and like the whole rediscovering of who you are and and again the whole not caring thing uh, and when i got back to work again and i also said no to a lot of with daniela's point i said no to a lot of jobs that i would have taken before and then waited till this i'm working on a big project now which i'm very excited about and it came at the right time it took it was a year after uh, my son was born and and I'm at a place now where I'm confident in the role, like as you can be as, as a mom who's working and taking time to myself to do that and placing my kid in somebody else's care. Um, so, so I think you can do it sooner, but if you, if, if you financially can do it, I was lucky enough to have a buffer financially, which I completely dried out. Um, but that was a priority for me. And then, uh, then I just took the time that I needed to do it. And I'm, I, I don't know if I would do that again for the second one, because it was not only about having the kid. It was also because I needed a break for a little bit. And it just came as it did with other people, with other situations with COVID and stuff like the whole break thing was just really nice. Lynn, how about you? Um, yeah, going back to work, I feel like... <clears throat> Maybe me, I, I feel I have the opposite um, experience for me. I was like, I want to go back to work. Let me go back to work. I don't want to wait. Um, so me, for, for me, uh, it was like probably when Ethan was five or six months old, I, was, I started like part time again because before that I really couldn't. Um, so I feel like when going back to work, it really depends person to person, like we're all different. We have different needs. Some of us feel like I want to spend more time with the baby. I don't want to put my baby in some other stranger's hands, you know, that's to totally okay. We feel like spend more time with the, uh, with our newborn bonding time. But for some of us, we do want to um, focus on what we're trying to focus on before. And maybe we have more driven kind of, um, thoughts to say like for me I wanted to do my personal work I have to do my personal work at that time I feel like I I'm only myself when I started like um painting and drawing again and I think for me I had a hard time after giving birth I feel like start painting and drawing again makes me feel more like myself so for that reason I feel for me it's good for me mentally to go back to work. So I started slightly earlier than like waiting a year or, or two or three years. So I think it really depends on how you feel. If you feel it's right if financially, like you feel, okay, this is okay um, for me to go back to work. I can't afford um, child childcare or if I have family support that allows me to go back to work, I'm ready, then go for it. If you're not, you know, it's totally okay. Just take a little bit longer time. Give yourself some more time to, um, uh, to to reset, to to focus on the new um, important uh, uh, aspect of your life. I feel um, that's. Yeah. I have a question, actually, another one from the audience that's related to that question. I mean, you are you all seem so um, like settled and confident and not feeling guilty. I feel guilty all the time, and I think. <laughs> about there's a question which is like do you feel torn between your career and kids ever do you ever have FOMO and if you do if you do or you did in the past how did you overcome that is it just like well too bad or you like talk to yourself and be like that's okay because this is more important what are first did you ever feel that <laughs> and if you did feel that how did you overcome it I feel like I'm I feel that all the time like even more so as I'm getting older. Like, I just feel like, um, I just want to do so much more that isn't really even available to me. But, um, and so I really, the thing that I am just constantly reminding myself is the only thing that matters. The only thing that matters is my kids and, and enjoying life. And I can enjoy life when I'm not painting or when I'm not working on some really important project, like there's ways for me to enjoy my life that are not um, career driven. And, um, and I think that that 
has been like a healthy dose of reality for me to just, just kind of remind myself of like, just to keep, keep the career focus in check. Um, and just remember that life is full of so much more than uh, career stuff. Yeah, I think you just have to let yourself. Uh, I still go through bouts of, oh my God, I wish I had done things so differently. I still feel guilty for things years ago. So yeah, you're going to have that. But, and that's why I said earlier, I wish someone had told me just sit down every night before you go to bed and forgive yourself for the day and just say, I did the best I could. And then the next day you, you try to do better in that sense. It's, it's hard, but, but, you know, in the end, you know, I've talked to my daughter about it, you know, there are things and she goes, Oh my God, mom, you, you were amazing. You came home every night for dinner. You did this, you did that. She tells me she's forgiven me, you know, for the, all the things that I haven't necessarily truly forgiven myself for. So it's, you know, it's, they don't see necessarily all the horrible stuff we think they're seeing or feeling or, you know, that, the, and, and if they do, and if, as they get older and you talk about it, um, you know, they, they start understanding your point of view eventually, and it's going to be okay. You know, as long as you've given it your best and you, there's a lot of love there, you're, it's going to be okay. You know, you just, just, have to get through it and and it is it is a get through it kind of thing <laughs> so. I just wish that dudes sorry not to just cut his I wish that men every day is like oh I just need to forgive myself every single day <laughs> is it is it just like a thing of moms that we do this or is it something about society you think that it tells so us I, I, I conversation solely on moms like this parenting working conversation is not, I mean, just the fact that like this, this thing with uh, Pixar, that it took a whole like team of moms to be working together for, for the hours to change or for it to become more family friendly. is ridiculous. I, I just think that it like, do these, I tried. <laughs> like what? <laughs> How, how is the responsibility completely on, on mothers? Well, you know, Maureen, I have, it's funny because I've been thinking a lot about this. I think that society, there are some um, kind of catchphrases that I really dislike, like multitasking. Women are good at multitasking. And I, I completely hate that. Like, I don't believe in multitasking. Um, you can have it all. Like, have you ever heard that about for men? You know, having it all is such a like flawed term, you know, that, that builds all this expectation of us to be something that we can't be, you know, and I, I'd rather use this, like, I like sports analogies, you know, like athletes really have to perform at the, are their best when they're competing, right? But like every other day they're training and it's not perfect. When they're training, they're just good enough or they have shitty days and they, sorry, I shouldn't say that. They have bad days. Um, and I think like my every day is good enough, good enough work, good enough momming, you know? And then there are times when I have to tell my husband today, I really need to focus and I'm really going to focus like today, this week is going to be hard and I'm going to be like more at work, you know, and some weeks my kids have a bunch of things at school and I'm like, I'm going to be dedicated to school. So work, you know, I have to leave early and I'll delegate stuff. So I think part of it is that we need to debunk these myths about what women are supposed to be, you know, because you don't hear like, oh, man, multitask, like just screw that. We just need to, we focus on things one at a time. And uh, when you kind of realize that, the, that's the other thing, just to go back to the FOMO and the forgiving yourself. I don't think that we hear anybody thinks that they've arrived anywhere. Like, I don't know, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't think that it's just like the every day you learn to do the work of thinking, did I do a good job or what can I do better? The work is just in a different place. You know, it's not, we have to be more thoughtful about what our values are and what matters to us. And, 
I think the notion of forgiving yourself is also understanding tomorrow's another day and I'm going to not feel guilty or not even think about it that way. I'm just going to um, go ahead and, and see what's most important today. So I think that's the, the kind of like nuance or like we can start shifting things to look at it a little bit differently. So the women don't have these like labels on them on them. And then we all feel guilty about it. Like, I don't think we need to waste our energy on that. You know, you had mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, you had to ask for what it is that you wanted. You learned to ask for things. And I'm curious, there's a question here about if you are not in a super fortunate position, like in uh, the films that you were on or Domi, so, and you are in a where the leadership tends to not understand or don't have kids or whatnot. How do you, can you, do, do you guys have any tips of how to advocate for yourself or what it is that you do you want? Um, it seems like Brenda, you have stories about how you tried and how they weren't necessarily always receptive, but I would love to hear how you guys have advocated for yourselves and, and your needs in an environment that's not as understanding. Maureen, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like, I, I feel very fortunate to work where I do, and the culture is changing. And, but, but regardless, when I go on a project, I just kind of, at some point, I had to shift my mentality to be like, instead of just serving, I had to go and say, this is what I need. This is, if you want me to perform well, without being forceful, just being honest, you know, this is, this is how I work my best, given my situation, I just kind of see can we work together this way if it's a more um kind of different group of people than than just other moms you know of course you have that understanding with other parents and i should say other caregivers because it's not just moms you know uh, my husband goes through some of the same feelings that i do you know he wants to be with the kids he has to work a lot so it's it's things are changing slowly but it's, it is, it, it, it does feel really bad to have to, to feel like you're asking for favors just to be like a decent parent, you know, like, can I leave at five to go pick up my kid? Like, I don't want to have to ask for that. I want that to be built into the system, you know, <laughs> or that's how I've approached it as well. When just answering the question, like, how do you ask for that? Or like, how do you approach the flexibility that you need? Like for me, I just kind of announce it like, oh, well, I need to leave at this time, blah, blah, blah. Um, and just kind of going from the point, going from the perspective that they don't know what I need. And so I just need to tell them. And, and, and I've been really fortunate to work with really amazing people, especially on the project that I just finished at DreamWorks was everybody was really great and very understanding of everything. Um, but for the most part, people aren't, people aren't in your situation. So they don't know what it is that you, they don't know that you've got like a uh, soccer at five 30 and then you've got this and that and not what, like, so you have to, yeah, you, you just have to say it. And there's no, there's no, um, there's no guilt. I feel like I, I put that away. Like, I think during COVID I was like, nah, I'm not going to feel guilty about this. I've got, I've got this to do. And like, if, if somebody has a problem with it, then that's probably a, a working relationship that I don't want to be in. Because it's just not. I also want to say as a, as a freelance artist where we set our own, I'm like Eliza mentioned earlier, I make sure that I'm like, I can deliver it at this time. And I want like, I make sure that, that I have the buffer and, and the availability. I don't press myself. If they need it in a certain time, I let them know if, whether or not it's possible within like, I know myself and how I work and what I'm able to deliver. And then I did give myself a little bit of a buffer because you never know how the day's going to be or how the week's going to be and, and stuff. And I found that the worst thing I could do getting back into work was getting stressed and uh, putting myself in a stressful situation. If I could avoid it, of course, there are stressful weeks where you have to deliver, uh, but then you have to communicate with the people that you work with and then make sure that afterwards you have the time, especially if you're managing your own time, because you can also end up overworking yourself. Good advice. Um, I did want to uh, mention, I think, because I worked freelance before and also worked freelance, 
um, like a contracting. So it's like a like a under a contract. It's like full time, but not necessarily like a short term freelance work. So I think in this situation, it's important to negotiate with your employer to say what you need. Like for a contract um, uh, agreement, usually there's no benefits involved, like maternity leave or anything. But <clears throat> when I was working at Funplus, which is a Chinese company, um, we my me and my coworkers start actually negotiating our new contract. Say, okay, we need maternity leave. Although we're a contractor, can we have this? So I think it's up to you. If your employer doesn't have that included, you have to take the step to say, okay, to speak up. This is what I need. This is what I plan to have in my future. And if the company values me, um, I want to work, continue working with the company. But during this time, I will need this kind of support. So if we can negotiate the contract to get what we need for uh, to protect us um, during the maternity um, leave time. That'll be really great. Um, I think for for a lot of us working at a bigger studio, which is great because usually a bigger company have a lot of um, good policy. Like you have full payment during maternity leave, which is awesome. Um, but for some of us who work freelance, I think it's uh, also important to save up. Like Camille was mentioning, she had a cushion so she can take a year off um, when she needed that. So I think import it's important for us to, to plan ahead financially, you know, what do you want? Um, I wanna share my experience because um, when I was pregnant, I just started working at Warner Brothers. Um, it's a big studio. They have amazing um, maternity leave policy. But it was so chaotic, you know. I worked at the company, um, but when I was about to take maternity leave, it's just a little under a year um, when I started working with Warner Brothers. So I was not qualified for their full um, uh, benefit. So in a way, it was so funny. There was one lady from their company reach out to me and said, oh, don't worry, we got you all covered. You don't have to worry about the um, California state's care and all that, don't worry about that. You're all covered, just leave it to us. But the second day they come back to me, oh, you're just under a year. So that's, uh, uh, so it didn't work out. So for me, I had to go through um, the California uh, child care. I forgot what's it called. So it's like government program. So I have to um, apply for the maternity leave payment um, through the government program, which was fine. But what I didn't know is like they, um, so for California, they give you a um, maternity leave kind of payment. It's not as much as your regular pay, but they um, take calculation of your like previous quarter, your average monthly income. So they calculate your payment based on that. But because I was working freelance before that, when they start calculating that, it just, the system just screwed me so, uh, screwed me up so much. So basically after the calculation, because before I was freelancing, so like the payment from government, it was like barely nothing. So I think it's important for us to, to know. Um, I think it's hard to know in advance, but I would suggest do our research, like what's your government um, or employer's policy on how to, pay for the maternity leave, um, know how it's calculated. So you can um, kind of adjust when to start your maternity leave, which um, kind of fin financially benefits you. So I had to start, I had to start maternity leave a little bit later so I can have the calculation of the average um, payment like the second quarter of that year, which is much better. So I don't know if that makes sense. I think it, it's hard for me to explain that situation, but. I think my point is just like, do your research ahead I'm of time. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> do your research ahead of time. <laughs> um, yeah, I try to avoid those pitfalls. Um, but yeah. backwards though. It shouldn't be this way. <laughs> it shouldn't be so hard to plan. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's like this in other countries, right? Like I saw people writing, it seems like in other countries, it's like great. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah, we have a, uh, in Denmark, yeah, we we're have just a, what is it like I think a year paid maternity leave for the women oh, and the husbands so have uh oh, the, not the husbands the men the fathers uh I think they have like six months or so I don't remember it's something around that 
Uh, right. Yeah. So, but we have really bad systems for freelancers. And just a quick note, they changed it in Denmark. So we could actually get paid something that was equivalent to what the money you made as a freelancer. But they changed it two months after I gave birth. So they're like, yeah, you're, you missed it by two months. So, no. yeah, <laughs> it sucked. I lost. Yeah. So that's also why I decided to give all my maternity. I can give my maternity leave to my husband. He, he gets higher maternity leave. So he, he got all, he got it all. He's, and we can wait until the kid is like seven years old. So I think we're going to do like a mm -hmm. time off at some point. And, yeah. but also had to self-finance my own maternity leave to do that. Um, one thing I, I wanted to uh, quickly just chime in about how to, you know, negotiate your terms, <laughs> you know, being a mom. For me, um, when I was, uh still at Pixar I think it was still a little bit of a kind of a uh not as um <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that was harder okay <laughs> harder to navigate that world and really probably just talking to other moms moms and dads just anybody who who had to deal with this even before me or while I was there or about to you know um be in a situation like I was, it really helped just to have more people together talk about the issues um, to either like supervisors or HR, whoever, you know, was um, was able to address it or bring it to their attention to the people who can actually make a change. And that was very empowering. Um, just talking to your peers and figuring out what actually the department needs or the company needs is like, the, you know, as the family component to that. Because there's a lot of families and we all, all operate kind of our, on our own, just so we're not in the way of anybody and with our issues, <laughs> you know, kids being snotty all the time and you take, mm -hmm. have to take like half, half a day here and there. Um, it, so yeah, that was very empowering, just talking to other moms and everybody's like, yeah, I have the same issue. So we all brought it up together. And, you know, that was like a very small step to great things that I hear, which is like phenomenal. Power in numbers for sure. I just want to do a public service announcement, which is that the data shows that when a woman um, becomes a mom versus a man becomes a dad, on average, the woman gets docked in salary versus the man actually gives a raise because they're like, wow, he's so responsible. <laughs> so I just think like, what do you do about this? I think what, what I found, I didn't have a kid back when I was at, in the gaming industry, which is very male dominated. But the way I handle is I just like constantly printed out research, highlighted stuff and showed it to my bosses. So I was just educating them. So then I'm like, you better not do this to me when the time comes. <laughs> just reminding them constantly so they know that I know what happens. It's a very aggressive stance, but it worked uh, for me. Anyways, it is, but, it is, but a lot of this stuff is political, though, you know, and it, and it, and if this is what helps systems change and to at least this point, you know, um, strengthen numbers, but also strengthen in numbers of ally, allies, you know, male allies. There's a lot of men who want more time off. And the fact that we like I get double what my husband gets, which it, I'm even lucky to get something because in the States, it's so unbalanced. But, you know, that's not fair <laughs> either. Um, I think in Canada, you can split like you, uh, if you're a family with your partner, um, regardless of gender, you can, I, th I think you get a year off and you can split it however you like, or maybe that's just in Quebec. And I like that system because it, it equalizes things. Every family is different. Maybe some women want to go back earlier. Maybe you really need that year off, you know? So I do think that it's not just like, it's important to not just sit on our own and kind of suffer on our own. You have to, if you work for a big company, you have a voice. You know, and, and to, you know, it's exhausting. Like for Brenda, I can't even imagine. It's exhausting for us too, even though we're in a more progressive world, <laughs> just always asking, but. But, and also there's something that it, it robs the the men of of this chance to to really put their family first. And, and it, right. it kind of like forces them into like this, this career role that perhaps they don't necessarily, they haven't really chosen, but it's just like, that's what society and the way that the world is, 
has been made. It's just has forced this system. And, and that's just, there's just so much more. There's just so much more to, to life than, uh, than climbing the ladder. Another pro tip, sorry, <laughs> at least what I say, sorry, my kid in preschool, um, if the dad, because it's always the moms who are so much more involved in the preschool stuff, if the dad is the one who's more involved, they'll like give you preferential treatment. Like they, they're just like, oh my gosh, a dad who's so <laughs> involved. And especially if you're trying to get to any prestigious type of preschools or whatnot, it, oh gosh, I always send my yeah. husband in instead of me because it's like a differentiator. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it's sad. But I have another question from the audience that I love because I think it's very different from a lot of the questions, which is the impact on your kids of you being um, in the creative industry. So the specific question is, will each of you encourage or have encouraged your children to become working artists? My children are grown, grown up now. One's working artists in the game industry. The other's studying to do the same. It's very satisfying for me. I'm curious how much each of you would encourage your kids to do that. And then also just broader, besides having your kids be artists, like how do you feel the fact that you are you are a creative person, how that impacts the way you raise your kids and how they might turn out? Yeah, and this might be the last question because apparently we only have nine minutes left. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my whole world right now with my daughter who is really into just everything art and so is my son and I come from an artist family it's it, it really truly there is I mean I really can't imagine them doing anything else but I'm very conscious of not I don't want to like put them on put that on them although I kind of think that the percentage of the chance of them going on to do something in the artistic field is is pretty high but I'm also I just want I want them to feel like they have the the choice to not especially just like with all the generations of artists in my family um i'm realizing that this is like becoming a quite a tradition now and so i i i i never want i just don't know how how heavy that's going to feel for them um at this point um but yeah for sure like obviously like i want my kids to 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 live out their most creative existence possible. Yeah, I feel well, you come from way. a giant lineage of amazing artists as well. So that's quite interesting. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm always adding these like super weird, awkward, embarrassing. They're not uh, awkward. They're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I think my, that one of my the best daughter... things. Oh, sorry. Go on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, thanks. Um, I was just going to say, you know, what, kids are so creative, like Claire was saying. All kids are so creative. And I think one of my favorite things about being an artist myself and my husband is an artist is that we're just curious, you know, all my artists and we're all curious. And I just I don't care what they do later, but I want them to kind of continue being curious in their lives. So if I can be that example, if we can together as a family be uh, inquisitive and interested in people and interested in the world. I think that's all that I care about, you know? So yeah, for sure. That part of my artistry, I, you know, I, I appreciate to share with my kids. Yeah, but my, my, my daughter, so um, has, go for it. Creative. Oh, so <laughs> uh, my daughter has a really creative soul and she's always, you know, growing up, she was always creating different things, but she was also interested in so many different things, music, as well as, as drawing and, and making things. But um, she, in the end, uh, chose to be a teacher. That's what she's studying right now, because uh, she felt I and I it sort of breaks my heart a little bit. She feels like she can't live up to what my husband and I have done. She can't, and which we have totally not put on her ourselves as we've tried to encourage her, but not like, like, like Claire force her into or make her feel obligated to go into that field. But now she's using all of those things and how she's approaching how she wants to teach and, and all that. So I think what I am excited to see is when she does you know, get into a classroom and how she, I think she's going to have this wonderful impact on a lot of children to, to carry on a creative 
point of view, you know, and just, and share that. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a good, it's a good grounding, I think, to have, to have creative parents. Well, we want to be yeah. very respectful for everybody's time, especially hardworking moms, uh, such as yourselves. Um, earlier, there was a, you know, there was talk about guilt, you know, and uh, my assistant also was telling me about her guilt about like her kids and everything. Uh, so I just wanted to like share that I was a really bad kid when I was little, like when I feel like I was a horrible kid and, um, and Later on, I realized that my mom felt so guilty about all those horrible, you know, mischievous things that I would do. Uh, and she felt like she didn't do such a good job as a mom, even though in my eyes, she absolutely did. You know, she worked a lot. She had, I think, like three jobs at one point working every day, you know. Um, and so she felt guilty of not seeing me as much. Uh, but growing up, my work ethic is because of my mom, right? It's because of seeing her uh, work so hard. And so, you know, if, if, any, if anybody listening or whatever feels that way as well, I, I could tell you that very likely they will benefit from that, you know, in the future. So uh, thank you to everybody that showed up. Uh, especially our amazing guests and my amazing co-hosts. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys do to inspire, not just the women, but the men as well. Um, just amazing what you've all accomplished while actually still raising kids and everything. It's, it's absolutely uh, something to be very, very proud of. Yeah, much thank you positive for thoughts us. to everybody. Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, thank yeah. you for having us. It was nice meeting you all. Too. Nice to meet you yeah. all. Too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awesome.